So you're buying a house and you're wondering how much you should put down. The standard answer to that is 20%. But the truth is, you can put down as much or as little as you want. Like when we bought our first condo five years ago, we paid cash, 100% down. And there are loans out there that will let you put as little as 0 or 5% down. Now imagine for a second that you had all options available to you. Enough money in the bank to pay cash if you wanted to, and a lender willing to go as little as 0% down. So which number should you choose? There are actually a ton of factors to consider here, but I'm going to zoom in on the one that doesn't get a lot of attention and is really important, and that's the risk-reward trade-off. Let's think about two people, Amber and Bryce. Amber just bought her house in cash, valued at $100,000. She has no other assets and no debt. That puts her total net worth at $100,000. Bryce just got a 0% down mortgage at 4% interest, on an identical house valued at $100,000 next door. So he still owes $100,000 on it. He also has $100,000 invested in a stock market index fund, putting his total net worth at $100,000. Now think about this. On average, homes appreciate in value about 3% per year, and the stock market goes up about 10% per year on average. Amber's situation is simple. In average market conditions, her home will appreciate 3% per year. But Bryce's situation is more complicated. His house appreciates in value at 3% too, but he also owns stock, which appreciates at 10% per year, outpacing the 4% interest charged on his mortgage. He's made a much bigger profit by leveraging his home with a mortgage to keep more money invested in stocks. The lesson is that if you put as little money down on your house as possible and invest the leftover cash in the stock market, you can come out way ahead if everything goes according to plan. But what if it doesn't? Imagine a market crash happens tomorrow, reducing all home prices and all stock prices by 50%. What are the total net worths of Amber and Bryce in this scenario? Amber has a home that's now worth $50,000. Her situation is still pretty simple, and her total net worth is now $50,000. Bryce also has a home that's worth $50,000, plus $50,000 left in the stock market. But he still owes $100,000 on the mortgage he just took out. His total net worth is $0. How much you put down on your house is variable, anywhere from 0 to 100%. But the closer you get to 100%, the less risk you may be taking, and the lower your expected return compared to someone who took a bigger mortgage and invested the rest of the cash in the stock market. By the way, this exact same thought process can help you decide whether to pay off an existing mortgage early or to direct your money into the stock market instead. Keep in mind there's a lot of other factors to consider when buying a house, but this question of risk level and leverage is often overlooked, so just give it some thought. And just to be clear, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a blogger who likes talking about this stuff. So subscribe to our channel and check out our website for more information on early retirement, investing, and money. But always make your own decisions.